Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophinet and welcome back to Bioshock. As you can see, we're still uh, in Fort Frolic and I've turned back a bit because I realized that we missed a room. A rather uh, funny kind of room, which I'm going to show you right now. We're back at the Fleet Hall, the theater. And, uh, well, we got ambushed here the first time we entered this place. We, uh, oh, I'm just going to hit this guy on the head. There we go. And uh, when we pushed the elevator, we got ambushed and there were splices coming from over there. But I never checked out where those uh, stairs would lead to. So there's a few storage cases under the uh, staircase. But more importantly, this actually leads up to the projector room. And this is actually closed off when we... Uh... Okay, something's getting torn to shreds there. This is actually closed off when we when we would have been here the first time we uh, got to Fort Frolic, to the Fleet Hall. Because Andrew... Uh, Andrew... There I go again. Because Sander Cohen is uh, right in this area when... Uh, well, it's that room over there that's locked when, uh, when we go in the Fleet Hall for the first time. So there's Sander Cohen. This is actually the first time you could actually spot him from over here because he's... Uh, Looking at Fitzpatrick, I think his name was. The guy that was blown up by the uh, dynamite wrapped piano. So yeah, he's watching him from over here. And you can actually go up and he tells you not to disturb him at the moment. Uh, nothing other, nothing else uh, happens at that time. But I'm going to assume that the uh, developer commentary is also in this room. But first, musical insult. Regarding your review of Anna Culpepper's latest musical insult. Of all the worthy artists in Rapture, why you continue to devote column inches to this musical gremlin is beyond my imagination. Where she is not derivative, she's boring. Where she's not boring, she's obvious. Where she's not obvious, she's dangerous. This does not seem to be the developer com commentary. But hey, so that was another uh, audio diary from uh, Sander Cohen himself. Maybe that's it. No? From Sander Cohen himself talking for the first time, actually, about uh, Anna Culpepper, his rival. The one we've heard one single audio diary from. And that uh, Sullivan is supposed to kill what's supposed to kill. Because, uh, of course, most of the events in the audio diaries have long since passed. There's a guitar here as well. And we can play a nice little tune. I think there are a few items in boxes over here that I'm gonna just whack them all off just to see if nothing drops out. So there's an Eve Hypo over there. Anger management they call this. Uh, so nothing in particular aside from the U invent we don't need to use right now. So let's see because now we can actually whack this out of the way and we're inside of the projector room. Uh, so we can search the container here containing some glue. And a Requiem for Andrew Ryan. So a that march. Let's listen to that. I could have been the toast of Broadway, the talk of Hollywood. But instead, I followed you to this soggy bucket. When you needed my starlight, I illuminated you. But now I rot, waiting for an audience that doesn't ever come. I'm writing something for you, Andrew Ryan. It's a requiem. So well, now we know why Sander Cohn is so mad at Andrew Ryan. Because uh, he didn't have any satisfaction. He didn't get any satisfaction from making stuff for the dull splices in this place. And he blames Andrew Ryan for that, for dragging him into it. Uh, absent, by the way, Moonbeam Absent right here is uh, Sander Cohn's favorite drink. And uh, we can also hear uh, Mariska Lutz singing the uh, National Anthem of Rapture. And also there's a director's commentary, so that's here as well. So we're gonna just take that so that we can watch that later on. So that's the, uh, the thing here. There's also a very, very powerful tonic here, Electric Flash. Supercharge your body with Electric Flash, the ultimate in electricity enhancements. Insulate yourself from harm with new Electric Flash. So you take less damage from electricity and you deal more damage when you use electrical attacks. Since we do use a lot of electrical attacks, we're actually going to equip that instead of Photographer's Eye too. Since we uh, 
we have uh, researched most of the enemies we can encounter. I think the only one we have ones we haven't fully researched are the Rosie and the Bouncer, the two uh, Big Daddy types. So let's go back down. I'm going to show you another room. So when we go back down, remember the oh hi. We remember the uh, the toilets over here, and uh, well, there were three of those plaster splicers here as well. And uh, well, they're still here. They're still here. But uh, I think since we pushed the button, they should come to life, no? Okay, I'm completely mistaken. I was wondering if they came back to life, because I wasn't really sure. They don't seem to actually come back. Maybe if I turn around? The shadows seem to be keeping still. I'm just setting myself up for a jump scare here. But, never mind then, if that doesn't happen. I'm gonna head back towards the Batosphere and leave this area for what it is. A very nice area. I really like uh, Fort Frolic, but I said that before. So, let's go further. Bye Sander. Bye Sander Cohen. So everything done, everything uh, discovered, and let's pull this lovely lever and go towards Hephaestus. And you can see there's three more options after that, kind of indicating how many areas we have to go. So we're kind of in the halfway uh, mark of the game but uh, here we go and there we go Hephaestus as always each area is linked to Ryan Sturren. We best keep to our knitting. hello Atlas welcome back it's time to either run the table or go home empty Ryan's got the genetic key to rapture we get that from him and we get out of this hell hole we don't then you and I are ghosts Indeed we are. Now would you kindly head to Ryan's office and kill the son of a bitch? It's time to finish this. So, head to Ryan's office and kill him. Sounds uh, pretty okay after what he's done to us. Um, okay. There he is, the man himself. His touch, if you knew him when. When he used to believe in the work, in the struggle. And now, he rots in that. Neverland, waiting for someone to come and tell him he still got it. I suppose that's why he let you live. Okay, so uh, Andrew Ryan not pleased, well, kind of disappointed that uh, Sander Cohen didn't kill us outright. Um, so I was wanting to say what the team was of Hephaestus, and you kind of can already see it. It's industry. So uh, this is the place that keeps uh, Rapture running. And uh, you'll see that plainly in a second. Let's see if I can do anything here. We have an auto hack, but I'm just going to wait with that since we don't have that much money. Look at this place. So uh, you can already see what this place actually does. It uses uh, lava flows, underground lava flows, so at the bottom of the ocean, to uh, power rapture in its hole. That's actually what this thing does, mostly. Uh, we hear splices. Let's keep this handy. And uh, the marker puts goes us, leaves us, leads us to the left over here. Uh, there seems to be something over here as well. A shotgun. But we can hear a lot of splices, and they're right over there. Goodbye. And as you can see, that wasn't any normal splicer. Because he had uh, a bit of jolt in his uh, hands. Because now we're going to start... I think we're going to start seeing splices who have similar plasmid abilities as we have. So that should be interesting because they were starting to get a bit uh, easy. So, Office of Andrew Ryan. Seems like we're going the right way. Through one of the Securus doors. And look at that. The gears are rolling. A large hallway leading down. Let's see if we can't uh, you can taste it, can't you? Confront Andrew the man. Ryan. I don't really want to taste Andrew Ryan. There we go. Andrew Ryan is apparently a bloody mess. Um <laughs> There you go. He's not smiling anymore. So uh someone got brutally murdered here. There's another chemical tour for uh just in case you missed the one, the blatantly obvious one in uh, Julie Langford's office. But uh, yeah, yeah, this place kind of looks broken down. Hello. 
Uh, so we have auto hacking on turrets, so that's not a problem. So we're gonna turn around. He needs to turn around, so we're gonna hack it immediately. Hello, Spider Splicer. You know what? I'm gonna just change our weapons a bit. Yeah, goodbye. Spider Splicer, thank you. Because I have been using the uh, wrench a lot, I know, so I'm gonna try and be a bit varied about this. So let's try and jump over this. Yeah, there we go. More frag grenades. I think we're full on that. Ryan takes Fontaine Futuristics. That's also a very interesting one, so let's listen to it. Ryan nationalized Fontaine Futuristics. He owns it now, lock, stock and barrel. For the good of the sea, he says. He'll break it up in due time, he says. Not resigned from the council and lodged me letter of protest, but that's just pissing in the wind. It'll be war, I say, unless somebody stops Ryan, and right fast. So when uh, Fontaine was killed, gunned down, uh, Ryan, well, took all of his businesses for himself. So that kind of made him the monopoly he was at the beginning of the of a Rapture again. So uh, not really good for the people of Rapture, as we've seen the effects of that. Since uh, Ryan still controls all the splices with that pheromone of his. And now we're in a pretty large area, so I might have been mistaken when I said that the uh, the underground area in uh, Fort Frolic in Poseidon Plaza was the biggest one. So yeah. But clearly it's industry, right? Don't think you can uh, miss that. So, let's take a look around. There's a lot of explosives in this area, which kind of fits with the industry team. Uh, but also something, of course, that we're going to be able to use. Oh yes, thank you. Heat seeking rockets. I really like that. Where are they? There they are. Okay, can't fire for some reason. Thank you. So, uh, for some reason all these spider splices have this really weird kind of Russian accent. Don't really know why that is. Kind of feels like it's, uh, well, rude towards the Russians. To give the uh, evil female spider splices that kind of uh, accent, but hey. Uh, let's take a look around. So there's, again, a lot of explosives. This thing has been uh, turned up and over, apparently, because there's beer and potato chips out of it. Scoping the gate, another one, because uh, we're going to get more and more tidbits about the uh, story. I spent the afternoon trying to get as close to Ryan's gate as possible without making a spectacle of myself. He's got a shield at six ways to Leicester. There's no way into that base. All I got for my trouble was the hairy eyeball from Ryan's splicer mates. Oh, that's the reward you get for trying to outsmart the best electrical engineer of our generation. So, uh, that guy doesn't give us a lot of hope uh, of us getting into Andrew Ryan's office, but we're gonna try anyway. Uh, so there seems to be a camera over here, so let's try and just hack the thing. I think we, uh, okay. There we go. Uh, they're starting to get a bit expensive to buy out, so let's just auto-hack them. There we go. Uh, now we should be able to check this place out a bit. I'm just gonna quickly hack this thing, because that will allow us to check out if there are any new items to invent. So they are getting really hard, so uh, there we go. Seems like mostly... Let's take the automatic hack tool. Like mostly ammo and, well, the two tonics that we could already make. Well, yeah, let's take Hacker's Delight for now. Not gonna use it, but uh, there's a trophy link to uh, having pretty much all the tonics. So there we go. Um, so there's another one of these. Let's not give them an opportunity to heal. Let's go back with the shotgun. Seems like there's more splices in this place. And there we go. A worm looks up. And sees the face of God. But look around. It's a regular convention of worms in here. They all had mothers, fathers, people who loved them. They got married, fucked their wives. What makes you think you're any different? I haven't chosen the spot for you on the wall yet. Probably here. Let me know if you have a preference. So let's see. He, uh, he is teasing us that we can't get through the front door, and apparently we cannot. So we can try this. 
But of course, nothing will happen unless we investigate the area further. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, people just pinned to the wall here, like trophies. Or people, all people that we, most of them we actually know, as you'll see in a second. Because a lot of them are in the uh, audio diaries that we've uh, picked up before. I'm doubting when these guys are going to enter. Can we open this yet? No. Okay, so we fir first need to investigate the area. So let's check out the obviously lit up corpse. And uh, going to heat loss. I had to go jungle style with that filthy ape for three weeks. But he finally spilled the beans on how to get to Andrew Ryan. Generate a sympathetic overload in harmonic core number three. That simple. Now all I gotta do is figure out what the hell a sympathetic overload is. And for that matter, a harmonic core number three piece of cake for an electrical engineer. Too bad I designed ladies' shoes. Gonna go see the grease monkeys left alive in heat loss monitoring. See what I can shake out of their trees. So, uh, this poor woman is Anya Anders daughter. I like all parasites who ever tried to walk. And there we go. Shoes. I'd explain the science that renders what you're trying to do impossible, but that would be like playing Mozart for a tree frog. <laughs> There we go, proximity mine in front of the door, and let's see how well they get through this. I'm just gonna use the crossbow, because we haven't been using that before. Oh, hello. There that one goes. Doesn't seem like he died. Doesn't seem like the crossbow is doing a lot either. So let's just try the uh, good old fashioned anti-personnel rounds. There we go. And then there's another one, I think, because he didn't die from a single proximity. Oh, hello! 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 Um, what else do we have? There we go! Rapture is coming back to life, even now. Can't you hear the breath returning to her lungs? The shops reopening, the schools humming with the thoughts of young minds. My city will live. My city will thrive. And when that day comes, we'll use your tombstone for pavement tiles. So Andrew Ryan clearly lost his marbles if he thinks that this place is still, uh, well, salvageable. Because, well, it's not. I mean, you look, look at it. Everybody's gone crazy. Everybody's murdering everybody. And uh, now we, we, we're going to have check out all the corpses because there's the uh, the corpse of Anya isn't the only one with uh, an audio diary on it so stopping Ryan here we go I never killed a man let alone a mate but this is what things come to I don't know if killing Mr. Ryan will stop the war but I know it won't stop while that man breathes I love Mr. Ryan but I love Ratchet I have to kill one to save the other. So be it. So McDonough, the uh, engineer that we heard a lot of throughout our journey, is uh, this poor burned and impaled fellow. And he didn't uh, manage to kill Andrew Ryan. So uh, there's a lot of people that we kind of get to know along the way because of the audio diaries that tried to kill Andrew Ryan and failed to. I'm just gonna take a look around to the other ones because I think there's one more that we uh, can recognize. No, this one. Okay, must be mistaken. I thought there was another one hanging around here. I thought Sullivan was one of these as well. Apparently I'm mistaken. It happens, it happens. So. We now need to, uh, thanks to the audio diary from Anya, we now know that we need to trigger a sympathetic overload uh, to cause that fancy lock to shut down so we can enter the office. So uh, the Hephaestus score is right over there and that's of course where we're headed. Let's pick up what we can. There we go. I shocked this guy in the water. And that kind of took care of that. And a poor dead uh, bouncer that's just lying here in the water. Let's see. We can zoom in with uh, with most of the weapons. By the way, we'll never really do that, but uh, we're not really silent either. So I think this is crouching. Because the crossbow is actually kind of a style, silent weapon, a stealth weapon is what I wanted to say. And uh, 
As long as the splicers don't notice you, you have the time to put in a headshot. Yeah, that wasn't really, really great now, was it? Oh, so he's trying to kill the uh, the big daddy there. Hello. Are you going to fire at him or me? Yep, there he goes. He is persistent, though. This, but I think, yeah, I think he's going to, he's going to lose. Well, uh, since we now have access, yeah, hello, thank you, big daddy. I'm going to, I'm going to let you finish this. Yeah, there he goes. There we go. So, um, right now, I think I'm going to take advantage of the uh, situation and start shooting at this guy. Oh, he's invincible during that animation. So, as you can see, electric flash is amazing. Because it does a hell of a lot more damage than it did before. And if we then switch back to uh, electric shell, that just completely obliterates him now. And there is actually an uh, Electric Flash 2, so an improved version of that. So I'm sorry, but Mr. B is kind of dead. So that's an Elite Bouncer. So let's first gonna grab the little sister. Because there seem to be a lot more splices around here. There we go. And that should be our third little sister again, I think. I've seen such terrible things and done worse myself. Thank you for reminding me that the light of the world has not yet been snuffed out. I am a little one to help you on your way. So now we're dealing with elite bouncers. Elite bouncers are uh, more powerful versions of the uh, normal bouncers. They also have this, uh, this red tint around their body. You can see an electric splicer over there. Which is of course immune to electricity. That was in your face. Jesus Christ, seriously? So if he hits you, you actually get electrified. Jesus Christ, okay. I'm a terrible shot with this thing. There we go. That was just four crossbow bolts that I just wasted on that one guy, but hey. So as I said, uh, splices with abilities will start spawning, which will make this trip a bit harder. I think there's a spider splicer on the ceiling somewhere. I keep hearing the noise. I uh, don't think there's a camera up here. It's down there. I'm gonna hack that later on. So there's the fighter chamber. And here we have Fontaine's Legacy. Strikes me that Fontaine wasn't overly inconvenienced by his own demise. On New Year's Eve, these wretched splicers come streaming out of the poorhouses and storm to the proverbial barricades. Dead rot in the streets, and Johnny and Janie Citizen are lined up around the block for plasmids. Anything to help fend off the rabble. So, uh, McDonough gives us another insight in what happened on New Year's Eve. Fontaine was dead by the time that the attack on New Year's Eve took place, but his splices nonetheless attacked, causing the uh, people to run towards, uh, well, the plasmid business. Which is, of course, something that Fontaine started himself. Making that a very nice business decision. Is there a splicer on top of us now? That's strange. So let's hack this thing. Um, yeah, I'm gonna auto-hack it. Never mind. Uh, so let's see. There's another one here. Do you guys have any idea there's a moron? If you don't follow proper maintenance of those big daddies, they burn through those R34s like them cheap apple berries. So, uh, Mr. Navarro was talking about the fact that Big Daddies were running out of batteries. The uh, R34s are the batteries that the Big Daddies run on. Because they are kind of robots in that sense. Because they're suits, they're actually humans in a suit, but their suit runs on power. So the marker uh, leads us downstairs, where we're gonna find a more more napalm. And over there is something interesting as well. So there's a spider splicer, which we're gonna. Okay, that was. Oh, for fuck's sake! Never mind. 
There we go. Still uh, the best way of dealing with these guys. Ooh, an automatic hack tool. Thank you, little sister. And goodbye. So now we have a double present. We have the uh, power to the people station over there. And then we have the gatherer's garden. Let's take this guy's things first. And uh, let's check this thing first. Shotgun rate of fire. Crossbow damage. I think I'm going to go for crossbow damage. Damage is always a lot more fun than anything else. So let's check out the, the gift. 200 Adam as usual for EVE Hypers, which we're going to leave, and a few Proximity Mines, we're going to only take two. So let's listen to the Assassin. So now we know why uh, Anya wanted to kill Andrew Ryan, her daughter, just as uh, Mariska Lutz's daughter, uh, actually was turned into a little sister. And of course, the mothers don't really agree with that. How would you be in that situation? So let's use this vending machine because it's kind of off. If we use it, a live grenade drops out. It's actually a fun little thing. Uh, so let's check these things really quickly. And I'm first going to check out the gatherer's garden. To see if we can't buy any new fancy upgrades, because that's always nice. So, uh, still don't think I need another plasmid slot, uh, so I'm gonna leave that. Let's see what we can upgrade. The ultimate in electrical attack stuns longer than any other. Incinerate 2. Wrench Lurker 2, that's interesting. Quiets her footsteps and greatly increases damage from melee attacks on unaware opponents. So let's buy that and swap it out for the normal Wrench Lurker. Um, then we have Incinerate 2. I think I'm going to use that one as well, so that's automatically replaced. Well, let's take a tiny health upgrade. We can use that. Uh, I think I'm going to use the um, another combat slot, because we're going to find a lot more interesting ones in a bit. So, maxed one track. There we go. Another trophy. So, we're going to go, we're going to stack it with another wrench jockey. So, those are those do stack. And then maybe while well, we do use Electro Bolt once in a while, you know what, let's wait. Maybe we find more tonics that we need a slot for. So that might be cool. So now our hand looks even worse when we use Incinerate. Great, eh? Great. Uh, I think, yeah, there's a corpse behind here with a bit of money. Because we're almost at the maximum again. Uh, and I think before we go any further, I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like it right here. And next time, we're going to head towards heat loss monitoring and trying to... Uh, start a harmonic overload or something like that was something fancy but hey with that said thank you guys enormously for watching and i hope to see you in the next video or series goodbye